make up for its shortcomings on the feature front, the all-new RAV4 packs a 2.5-litre naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine under the hood. It produces 203 horsepower and 243 newton meters of torque. What that means is that it's got more power than all its other rivals, but torque isn't as much as the Honda CRV and the Mazda CX-5. Interestingly enough, the RAV4 pushes its power through an 8-speed automatic transmission and comes with a full-time 4-wheel drive system, much like its elder siblings, the Prado and Land Cruiser. To keep up with more premium and expensive SUVs in the market, the all-new RAV4 also comes with three drive modes and three multi-terrain modes. Since the RAV4 hasn't got any locking differentials to help it off-road, a bunch of sensors work together with the engine and transmission to decide how much power goes to each wheel and distributes it accordingly. Essentially, whether you're driving in mud and sand, rock and dirt or snow mode, essentially the car calculates which wheels have the most traction and sends power there accordingly. While the RAV4 is arguably the most capable amongst its rivals off-road, it is on tarmac that it continues to shine. With a 55-litre fuel tank, the RAV4 averages 10.3 litres for every 100 kilometres, which means it's very, very fuel efficient. In fact, the tiny sips it takes out of the fuel tank are by far its best feature. The Toyota RAV4 has come a long way in the past 25 years and continues to be an important name in the segment that it competes in. This all-new model wears a starting price of 99,000 dirhams, with this full-option adventure trim coming in at 129,900 dirhams in the UAE. Let us know in the comments below which one of these four crossovers you'd like to drive home. The all-new RAV4, the Honda CR-V, the Mazda CX-5, or the Nissan X Trail. Thanks for watching. Powering the XC40 T5 is a 2 litre turbocharged petrol engine that produces 250 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. Being the more powerful of two available units, it's the one to go for if you enjoy your speed and performance. And if you do, you'll also be happy to know that the XC40 is more powerful than all its German rivals. Out on the road, the XC40 handles like a hot hatch with its small dimensions and all-wheel drive setup, allowing it to take corners without much body roll. For the tamer drivers, it's still a very enjoyable experience. The 8-speed automatic transmission shifts through gear smoothly and makes sure to keep the RPM needle below the 2000 mark when cruising at highway speeds. Being a city car, the Volvo XC40 is relatively fuel efficient and averages 7.7 .7 litres for every 100 kilometres. To tackle changing conditions, it also comes fitted with five drive modes. Comfort, Individual, Dynamic, Eco and Off-Road, with the last one limited to a top speed of 40 kilometres per hour. Which is enough when you think about it, because the XC40 does have really big wheels and not a whole lot of ground clearance cross 40 km per hour and the XC40 will revert back to its default comfort mode. If you've watched this far, then I'm sure you're questioning how much this beautiful XC40 R design costs. At 174,900 dirhams, it isn't exactly cheap. But then again, neither are any of its German rivals. If you ask me, however, it's a really simple choice. I mean, wouldn't you want a car that's unlike anything else out there with an air ventilated woofer, recycled carpets on the door panels and a speed camera detector? I know I do. Thanks for watching. The 2 litre turbocharged engine that resides under the hood of the MGHS produces a healthy 231 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque far more than any of its Japanese rivals. Top speed stands at 210 km per hour, but if driven sensibly, the HS will return an impressive 13 km per litre of gasoline. Easy and comfortable to drive, the MG HS is fitted with five drive modes. Eco, Normal, Custom, Sport and Super Sport, the last of which is controlled from a Ferrari-style button on the steering wheel. 
although the suspension is soft and does a good job of absorbing bumps in the road, you can feel the systems making changes to the mappings of the six-speed dual-clutch transmission and the ECU. Shuffle through the modes and you will feel the HS become more responsive. It holds onto gears longer and the ambient lighting system and instrument cluster change from a cool blue into a sporty red. For some mild off-road adventures, the HS does come fitted with a differential lock and hill descent control. Speaking of the differential lock, I should point out that the model we're testing is an all-wheel drive version, and so the function of the differential lock remains to split power perfectly 50-50 between the front and rear wheels, as opposed to the onboard computer deciding how much power goes to each wheel. Where praise for the MGHS ends, however, is when talking about its power and torque delivery, with peak power and torque coming in at 5,300 RPM and 4,000 RPM respectively, which is extremely high for a turbocharged engine. There's plenty of turbo lag and the HS feels slow to respond when power is needed straight off the line. Wait a few seconds for the turbo to spool and then it kicks in hard, making for a very jerky and twitchy ride. Simply said, it's best enjoyed in eco and normal mode. At 79,000 dirhams, this fully loaded MGHS makes a very strong case for itself. Considering it offers more than its rivals for nearly half the price, I'd have to say, when it comes to value for money, it's difficult, if not impossible, to beat this HS. Thanks for watching. When it comes to driving a mid-size family SUV, it should have enough power, it should be comfortable to drive, and it should be relatively fuel efficient. And the Honda CR-V ticks all the boxes. The 2.4-litre four-cylinder engine that powers the Honda CR-V produces 184 horsepower and 244 newton meters of torque. It pushes this power through a CVT transmission to all four corners since we have the all-wheel drive version with us and it averages 14.7 kilometers per liter. Being a CRV, it is comfortable to drive with more than enough power. The dimensions are easy to judge because of the high seating position, and since comfort is of utmost priority, the suspension does a great job of soaking up bumps and imperfections in the road. It is very, very smooth. So let me get this straight. You said a good family SUV should have enough power, be comfortable to drive and be fuel efficient. Power I have plenty of. Because you see the Levante Trofeo's 3.8 liter twin turbo V8 that is built by Ferrari produces 590 horsepower and 730 newton meters of torque and sends all that power and torque to all four wheels. Just to be clear, that's three times the power in your Honda CRV. Next, comfort. The Levante Trofeo has three drive modes normal, sport, and Corsa. And it has a separate suspension sport mode that controls the air suspension that also allows you to control the height of the car. Put it in Corsa mode and it will comfortably reach 100 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds and a top speed of 304 kilometers per hour. Remember, this is an SUV we're talking about. Wow. Your last point was fuel efficiency. Who cares about fuel efficiency when you can enjoy these sounds coming from the intake and the exhaust of this gorgeous engine? <laughs> and to tell you the truth, I'm much happier with my ZF 8-speed gearbox even though it's not as fuel efficient as your CVT in that CRV. And to show you how ridiculously fast the Levante Trofeo is, Zaran, how about a little drag race? You're up for it? Now I know what you're thinking. A drag race between a Honda CRV and a Maserati Levante Trofeo is utterly pointless. And you're right. But let's just say you're one of those parents who's always late to drop their kids off to school. Then let's see just how much faster you can get there in a Maserati. In 
In this challenge, we have learned that the Honda CRV is still one of the best family SUVs you can buy. With the starting price of 92,900, it's comfortable, it's practical, and it's affordable. And it can go through a sandstorm. We found that out today. I totally agree, man. The Honda CRV should be on the list of anyone looking for a car in this segment. But if you want to add some, not some, a lot of thrill and a lot of excitement to your family life and you have enough budget to buy seven Honda CRVs, then the Maserati Levante Trofeo should be on the top of your list. Thanks for watching and next time I'll remember to set a budget. And I'll remember not to film this during a sandstorm. See you soon. Bye bye.